And now, I talk back with Ray. I'm telling you, I couldn't make it up if I tried. And Mandy. You've got to be freaking kidding me. You know what? That's all I'm saying. Welcome, welcome to I Talk Back with Ray and Mandy. I'm Ray. And I'm and Mandy. This is Mandy. Um, we have a special Mother's Day edition where we have our mommies that are coming to join us and do a special Mother's Day um, episode of our podcast. Um, my mom is Miss Cynthia, and Miss Mandy's mom is Miss Yolanda. And we're going to just jump on in and start asking questions um, to our mommies that so y'all can have like a little sneak peek of of why we are the way we are, good or bad. I don't know about all that, but... <laughs> yeah, I was telling people today, I was like, we're going to do an episode with our moms. I was like, this should be fun because we're all kind of crazy. No, I'm just <laughs> no. I said, I said, we are all very strong women. It's going to be interesting. But yeah. no, I was like, it's, it's going to be nice. It's going to be real nice. Yeah, yeah awesome. Um, yeah, no, I thought this would be a really, really, well, Ray and I both thought it would be a really good episode just because, you know, we both have, we both are pretty, you know, strong and we know that we got it from somewhere and just like, you know, we both tell each other stories about you guys and things that you guys have done or that you guys do. And so we just thought it would be nice to hear kind of like, you know, how you feel about you know, because I know you with you, mom, you had me when you were what, 21 and like how you and I'm your oldest. I'm your first. And so how how you feel becoming a mom at 21, because when I think about it, like me being a mom, I became a mom at 19. And so when you become a mom, it's like that's where you pretty much like you're never going to be alone. You know what I mean? You're always going to have somebody that you're taking care of and that you're mm -hmm. always going to be responsible for. And so at that point, it's like you're giving yourself, you're giving a part of yourself to somebody else. And so with you becoming a mom at 21, I just wanted to know like how that felt for you. Like, what do you, what do you feel being a mom? Well, you know, at the beginning, working where I work, a lot of work with life, uh, charity, life, charity and justice and marriage and life stuff and I've got a lot of things I think about now reflect on those early years where it's like you know how many people can say I grew another human being in my stomach but, I mean, it's another human being yeah. and it's and, and being as young as I was at that time you know and in the generation that I was uh, you know, I grew up in it's like, this is what you did. It's like, you know, you went to school, you finished school, then you got married, you had a family, you get a house, you know, work, you know, so it was kind of like you're going into succession into the store, your story. Um, but I just, I kids are, have always been, my mom is one of 10. So there was, uh, you know, my aunts and uncles are like, I have aunts and uncles are like four years, three years older than me. So we kind of grew up together with them. We played together, you know, and then uh, some of her brothers had kids and I remember taking care of their kids and changing diapers and doing all that. I was 9, 10, 11 years old. So becoming a mother was not a big jump for me. Uh, and caring for another human being and caring for another little person until they grew up, it, was, it wasn't a big jump. Uh, I didn't find it challenging or anything like that because, you know, until they got to be a teenager. That was a whole different story. <laughs> what? You know, Me? Never. <laughs> baby and having a child that you're more responsible for, I think that's just part of life. I mean, you, you know, if, from my generation, that's where I, I remember seeing it. You know, this little person is mine. And my Mr. Long, how old are you? I am 66. 65. I'm going to be 66 in July. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, by the time I was 30, I think I figured out by the time I was 30 or something, I, had, I would have my four kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were like three years apart, except Amanda and, and Heather. They're like two years and 11 months apart. Yeah. Because Heather was born in August and Amanda's birthday was September. 
That's right. So she had us close, so I, you know. Years, you know mm -hmm. just about, they're all three years apart. And that was a, it just happened. You know, none of my kids were planned. They just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. So, it, it just, that's all <laughs> You too, Miss Cynthia, you too? Right. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, mom, For sure. so, like, we're, like, exact opposite. So, I'm my mama's last baby. I'm number the baby. five. <laughs> I'm the baby. And I, I'll tell everybody, I'm my yeah. mama's baby. So, uh, so my mom became a mom at seventeen. At seventeen years old, right, mom? We have more than yes. seven. So, tell us about how that experience was for you, and how that changed your life at seventeen. Okay. Um, yes, I was seventeen when I um, had my son, and of course, he was with. It was my my first real boyfriend. Because uh, I couldn't date until I was 16. <laughs> so like your mom, um, Amanda, uh, I'm 70. So, you know, back in the day, you know, those were things. And I always had plans to have children. You know, I, I wanted three children. I already said it. That's what I wanted. I wanted three children. So with Ray's dad, like I said, we were in high school. Mm -hmm. And... When I got pregnant, so like I said, and so I had Des Moines when I was 17. Um, it, I'm, I didn't have, I being the oldest, because I was the oldest in my family, so I had two younger brothers who I took care of. Um, and like you're, like Miss Yolanda, like Yolanda, I, you know, I already, I guess you could say, you know, you kind of have that, that nurturing already. So it's to take care of somebody, you know, and, you know, I took care of my brothers and, and, and so when I had Des Moines, you know, it was just, it wasn't like a, this new thing uh, of taking care of somebody, but of course, as a new mom, and cause it is your child, there are things that you have to learn, you know, because when I took care of my brothers, my mom was the one that, you know, did the, the heavy lifting and did all the, you know, the other stuff. Um, I can remember uh, when Des Moines, because Des Moines, Lord have mercy, he had issues with milk. Okay, first of all, I tried to breastfeed. That was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> and so, but he, and, and the other thing was that he was allergic to everything. So he ended up being on soy milk. Mm -hmm. And so it was horrible, you know, he broke out and yeah, so I had those challenges, but, and so, but one good thing about, I had a village around me, you know, I, I, when I say that, you know, I was raised somewhat around my grandmother, but when I had most of my children, I had a village. It was either my husband's mom and his sisters when I lived in Austin, but then I left Austin and moved to New Mexico because that's where my family was. Mm -hmm. So, and I had a village there because I had my grandmother, I had my mom, I had my aunts, I had my cousins. So I always had help with my children. So... Yeah, and it was five of them, and yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting, because I had twins, too. Yeah. Um, my son was the eldest, then I had the twins, and they were 18 months apart. Then I waited four years, and then I had the last two. I had Brandy mm -hmm. and then Rashawn. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that was, yeah, it was a, it was a journey. Was Rashawn planned or did she just want to come along and just none of them you? were planned? None of them were planned. <laughs> Rashawn, a yeah, of fact, Rashawn don't seem like she'd be planned. Rashawn just seemed like she'd no, be like, hello, no. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, she was not planned. As a matter of fact, though, I was trying to take birth control mm. after I had my son. So, but I, it made me so sick. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take anything. I, yeah, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. So then I ended up, I remember I had changed, was in the middle of changing pills, birth control mm -hmm. pills or something, and ended up pregnant with the twins. So yeah, anyway. Man, you got two. <laughs> yeah, I got two. Yeah, I got two. <laughs> the double for your trouble. Was it double for your trouble? Yes, trump? Lord, double. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's absolutely 
it's great when you have, like you said, a, a team around you and support, especially when you, I mean, having, you know, a baby that has needs and has like extra special help that you need to do for them. Um, it's important to have a support system, a strong support system and family. Like we come from family. We have a strong support system too, um, of just people that are able to help us. And it's, it's important. Yeah. yeah. It, it is really important. Is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So what advice would you give your younger self? Knowing what you know now, what is like maybe think of a trying time in your life? Like, what advice would you give your younger self about what being a mom or what about being, being a mom? Just life, maybe life, mom, all that. Uh, the advice that I would give my younger self, um, I would definitely wait. Um, I would probably be like Yolanda, probably 21, 22. Because the thing about it is, is that I think that we all, I mean, I did. I, I wanted to go to college. I wanted to, to, to major in journalism because I love writing and I love doing that. So I would definitely have waited to, you know, to, I, I would have gone to probably pursued college then, you know, so I would have been more intentional about not having sex. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, yeah, especially, yeah. So, so and that was, that, yeah, for sure. Think about that. I can barely hear you, Mama. I can barely hear you. What did you say, Michelle Onda? I said that when you were that age and that in our generation, they didn't talk about sex. They didn't tell you anything about sex. No, mm -hmm. not a lot. Mm -mm. You had your menstrual cycle. They wouldn't even tell you about that. You know, your parents <laughs> or your mom or anybody. I think my aunt's the one that told me because, and I was like, and I don't even remember, like, when I got my cycle, I was like nine. And yeah. it was like, you know, what's happening? Yeah. And then, you know, you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then my aunt kind of figured out that I was on my cycle because I think I bled on the bed or something. And she's like, are you on your, your, your cycle? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I, I don't know. You know? So it's like, we didn't, they didn't yeah. tell us. They did not tell us about that. You know, being nine, you're still, I mean, you're nine, you're a baby. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. yeah. And that, that's true. I was 10. So mm -hmm. when I started, so I told, yeah, so you're right. And I didn't know, I mean, you know, and like I said, me being the eldest, so I didn't have like sisters or, you know, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, around me. So as a 10, you you know, I was, I was such a tomboy. I would be out there climbing trees and doing mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So I wasn't, yeah. you know, that wasn't, yeah, that was, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, Michelle, what would you give? What would you tell your younger self, Miss Yolanda? I think, uh, like, not sometimes not to take your, yourself too seriously. Like, mm -hmm. you have to have fun. You have you have to be careful, but you, you know, don't try to plan every second of your life. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, live it. Live your life. Because it's, yeah. you, you know, like you say, you only traveled that road once. You can't turn around that and relive that. Yeah. So it's just, you know, take those chances. Because you can ask my daughter, I'm not a risk taker. I have to like analyze every piece of information before I make a decision. So it's like, take those chances, you know, take some chances. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, and even if they don't work out, hey, you know, you, you, you learned a lesson, you, you know something that you didn't know before. So right take take a risk every once in a while so i could tell y'all my mom met my dad when she was 13. wow yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so wow. like like she's she's not a risk taker <laughs> <laughs> not at all she didn't want me to go yeah. mom <laughs> my mom met my dad mom how were you when you met daddy um I was 16. Yeah, 16, okay. that's when she could date. Yeah, I was 16. That's right, yeah, yeah, 16, that's it. And then she met, yeah. 
But the thing about it is, I didn't know your dad till I went to high school. So that's where mm -hmm. we met at Austin High. So, you know, and at that time, mm -hmm. the 10th, 11th, and 12th was considered high school. It's mm -hmm. not like mm -hmm. now, you know, junior high or middle school, what they call middle school, was 7th, 8th, and 9th. So mm -hmm. you didn't go to high school until you were in the 10th grade. Yeah. So that's when I met, I met your dad when mm -hmm. I was in, yeah, when I went to, to Austin High. Wow. That's pretty awesome. I met my ex-husband when I was 17. I was 17 when I met Bruce. Mm -hmm. Just I, Yeah, I met Donnell when I was 16. <laughs> 16? 16, 20, 17. Just, don't even, just making bad decisions. I don't know. Yeah. We just... So my mom, my mom tried to run him off. My mom was like, "You're too old for her. Go ahead." Yeah. You know? My mom everybody was like, get. Were, "Everybody had to wear, run everybody off." My mom said, "Get, get," and he didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was gonna stick and stay. Boy. That's right. He was gonna stick and stay. He had him a young tender He wasn't going to <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I have one more question, and I'm gonna let a man admit it to better because I just like I just had these like these two. I wanted just to ask. Okay. So for mom, what word would you use or words, it could be more than one, would you use to describe me and why? I'm listening. <laughs> what words would yeah. I use to describe, describe you? And why would you use those words? I'm adventurous. Mm -hmm. Um actually two words smart and adventurous you are always smart and you are smart um even in school you were the the kid that didn't have to study real hard to make good grades the other thing that um you've always been adventurous always the person that gotta go do stuff gotta you know <laughs> She go. She would go spend the night. I have to get her. Go get. She didn't want to come home. She just want. You know. She's just always doing. You know. Be and actually, I love that now. I love that about her because I've got to experience things through her being adventurous. So, and I love that. I do because I I can say. I was kind of, I, I think I was kind of like Yolanda. I've always been so serious about life. Um, and even her dad used to tell me, you know, you need to lighten up, you know, because I, I, I was always, you know, I took things very serious. And I, and I think the reason I'm, that was, was because I was the oldest. Mm -hmm. And so I always felt like I had responsibility. I had to be responsible for somebody, some thing so I, I did I and and so I had really in my later years I really started to enjoy life and be willing to take some risks and be willing to you know go out on that limb you know I took a helicopter ride you know not too long ago <laughs> I probably would have never done that you know but it, it's just yeah so I've, I've I've learned to enjoy life more yeah, as as I've gotten older. So and I appreciate that about Rashawn because she I call her Ray, but mm -hmm. she um yeah, because she is an adventurous person. Hmm. Interesting. I'll take it. I am adventurous. <laughs> I do I love I'm always like doing stuff. Like I'm always like, oh I've never been there before. Let's go. Like that that's like me. I'm not like I don't want to go there. I've never been there. Like I don't want to do that. Like I wanna say, well, I look at it like the worst thing that happens, I just don't go back. Like, you know. Like, so yeah. I, I do, I do like to try new things. I'm like, let's go. I'll get on the plane in a second. I love, I, I do. I love, I just love being at the airport. I just love it. You buy your tickets, you buy your tickets last minute? Let's go. Let's go buy a ticket. I don't buy tickets last minute, but I do pack last minute. So Amanda, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Bob, Amanda packs like two weeks ahead of time. That's right. That. Gotta oh, make Lord, sure I, I can't even stuff. do that. I can't well, even do that. Know, I was laughing at her about the other day about that. I was like, "What do you mean you're you gotta pack? You're not leaving till like two weeks." That's right. It's like, no, I, I gotta go home and start packing. I was like, "Girl, I packed the day. I packed my flight leave at six. That I had to leave home by four to get to the airport. I mm -hmm. packed at twelve. No, nope, that would have I me stressed out. 
I can't be stressed out. <laughs> I'll be stressed out packing like that. That's okay. Yeah, because like, has- like the worst thing that happens, there's a store wherever I'm going. No, so I'm like I get, I get thinking about it gives me anxiety. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I can I see I that. Going. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, will I mean, I. Yeah, I'm hanging clothes funny. out of the dryer the day I'm getting ready to leave. Like, uh-uh. yeah. nope. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta be prepared. <laughs> Amanda gets like she takes souvenirs with her for, to people. I was like, what? Right. Yep. <laughs> Sure do. I got to do any of that. I got to sprinkle go. a little bit of Texas over there. Yeah, I just go wherever I wherever I wherever I land up and where I land up. I don't know. I'm good. That man is funny. funny, and we're uh-uh. so different about that. She's so she's such a planner, and I'm not. Uh uh-uh. Well, what um, about you, Miss Yolanda? Yeah. Want to know, how would you describe Miss Mandy? Um, she's. I think she's a uh, she's a the person. Okay. Are you frozen? On that? She's gonna be intelligent. When she was a kid. It's like she could never stay in school because she just got bored. Uh, mm. And and uh, she's a strong person. I think she's got a strong uh, character, a strong personality, a strong. Um, what do you say? Uh, just her character. Her, her character. She's she knows the difference between right and wrong. And she, mm-hmm. she, you know, supports the right thing. Moral compass, yeah. So that's I know fair. that. that yeah. Um, I'm a product of Catholic school, so that's why I think I'm very rigid and very mm. like, because you know we were always said this is right and this is wrong and you can't do the wrong thing. So we never did. We didn't stray from the right to the wrong. We, I mean, we didn't even, you know, we didn't even, we didn't even get close to the line. We were. On that path, that all <laughs> so I think that um, you know that's part of my character. That's who made what made me who I am. You know, to be that analytical person and not take risks. Because mm. I just didn't do that. We always did the right thing. Period. There was no question about it. Um, and I was the second oldest. Of, we had, there's five of us girls. I had one sister younger. One year young. One year younger. And a sister one year older and then my other sister was like three years four years younger than me and then my other sister was like 40 years younger than me mm-hmm. so you know as a kid I, I was I was the middle child per se so I was the one that always like kept everybody in line and I was like <laughs> you know, I said I look at myself back I reflect back I was a bully it's like you better do what I say because if you don't <laughs> And that's just who I was. She was the bully. On. Yeah. Oh I was, my goodness. I would make everybody do what I said, what I wanted done. That's I where did. Amanda gets it from, I think. That's where Amanda <laughs> gets it from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would, I would say, say Amanda is a bully. I would say she's a bully, but Amanda has really grown into herself. <laughs> Amanda has really grown into herself from where we first met. That's where we just laughed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're well, taking some stories, Lord. I was like, Oh, my, my mom, my mom could tell you some stories. <laughs> and, and I, look, I, I was just, I was just that child. Because I don't know what I would have done if, if I had known the other stories that, that happened. That just I look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was a typical, I was a typical youngest child, I think. I was a typical baby. I was a typical, like, d- don't tell that it's hot. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh I'm yeah, really, like, sure. I want to see for some sure. myself. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think I always sure. I always tell the story of you know I wanted a rock tumbler. I remember I wanted a rock tumbler. My brother told me you have to tell the rock tumbler story when you're talking tonight. I wanted a rock tumbler when I was younger and I never got it. And so I always tell my brothers maybe if I would have got a rock tumbler, then I would have been busy rock tumbling rocks and not getting into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but I think with me, I think everything changed like. I was. I think I started when sixth grade. Would you agree? In sixth grade, yeah. I started when I started getting like, huh? You were about eleven years old. Yeah. Like, about sixth like, grade. Totally different person after eleven. But it's like, what is? <laughs> Who so, is this person? Yeah. Yeah. She was like, she she started liking this boy at school, and she 
And I try to be very open with the relationships with them because I know as a child growing up, we were not allowed to go anywhere. We couldn't go to sleepovers. We couldn't have friends over. We couldn't go to other people's houses. My parents just didn't allow that. Mm -hmm. oh, so wow. when my kids were growing up, I was like, well, they're going to have friends. I mean, I and I was made an uh, uh, effort to meet the parents before I would allow my kids to spend the night anywhere. I said, well, I don't know. Let me meet their mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And then I would, you know, feel them out and say, okay, I like them. They seem okay. You can do it. Or if I didn't like them, I said, no, you can't spend the night there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. You know? And then I would let her have kids come over and spend the night. That was a disaster some nights too. But, you know, I would let her have kids over. We would have one of uh, the little boy spent the night at our house downstairs on the couch because his mom kicked him out of the house. I thought, how am I going to leave this little boy out there sitting on the curb? Yeah. You know, I said, I didn't. but, you know, wow. I have kids too. So, you know, I have to protect my kids as right. well. So, but I felt, you know, they went to the same school. So I, I felt comfortable with letting him come and stay the night uh, and, and spend the night. I said, you, you're sleeping on the couch. You know, I said, we don't have an extra bedroom for you. Mm. <laughs> you have to sleep on the couch. Yeah, I, I only had a boy stay with me one time. That was my ex-husband. and But my mom was very strict. Like, I was pregnant. The deed was done. I was pregnant. And I was really sick when I was pregnant. And so Big Terrence would come and, like, help out and stuff like that. And even then, my mom made him sleep in the living room on an air mattress. He was not allowed to sleep in the room with me. <laughs> That's right. I was like, uh-uh, y'all not married. Y'all give you, uh-uh, not in my house. I don't care what y'all so, did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when y'all did it, y'all wasn't here. That's yeah. doing it. <laughs> so so Bob was not having that. Because, you know, I allowed my kids to have these people over. And then nowadays, yeah. the, today's society or today's parent mm -hmm. will let the boyfriend stay over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they do. They do. Mm -hmm. You're right. Okay, yeah. But that, yeah, that wasn't happening at my house. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was, I mean, yeah, that no, that was yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, but the kids were allowed, you know, because especially because I we had four girls and and one son. But I think we had a really cool house because the kids were, you know, allowed to come over and, you know, so they did, you know, like you said, and and Rashawn and him could go. But like I said, you met the parents. You just didn't let your kids just go anywhere and do anything. Mm -hmm. You just didn't do that. You know, like you said, you go check out the parents, you meet the parents, you just didn't let them go just because they wanted to, or, you know, that's just not how that worked. And even when children would come stay with me, I wanted to meet their parents. I want to know. And, and I would think that that's, you know, it should work both ways, but yeah, that's what we did. But, you know, the kids, they would come and, and we always had kids hanging out at our house. And even my, my son, you know, he had, you know, his friends were always hanging out and eating up all the food and stuff, you know, as teenagers and stuff. <laughs> OMG, the, they would come over there and eat up everything. So, yes, but we had, I think we had a, they had a good childhood about that. Yeah. Growing up with, with able to, being able to have friends and sleepovers and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Amanda, I'm sorry. I asked all the questions. You can ask questions. Sorry. That's okay. What do you say, Mom? Even those sketchy kids would stay over. The sketchy kids. The sketchy kids. The sketchy kids. They're like, um, but even the parents, I mean, I would ask my kids, I would use the third degree, like, what What are his parents' names? What are their names? What mm -hmm. do they do for a living? What do they work? What do, yeah. <laughs> where do they live? What house do they, you know? I do, that right. I do that to Taviana. Where are you going to stay? Who is it? Where are they, how you know them? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but that's My important. kids, they never I mean, stay nowhere. Everybody came like, yeah. nah, your, your kids, they, ne they just don't, they never stay they anywhere. Did. Mm -mm. Everybody came here. I yeah. didn't even think it was like a time when my kids stayed somewhere else. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Thinking about that now. Because you made it too comfortable. That's why they didn't want to leave. Maybe, girl. Um, they they didn't want to leave little uh -oh, yeah. so. <laughs> Finally. That's right. Mm -mm. No, I had two questions. One of my questions, well, one of my questions is kind of a two-parter. I wanted to know, for both of you, I want to know what is one of the rewarding moments that you can think of being a mom and one of the scariest moments you can think of being a mom. 
Huh. For me, the, the most inspiring thing to have with you is knowing that you guys are um, doing what you want to do and, and that you're happy doing it. You know, everybody wants a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, a you know, congressman or whatever. And to me, it's just, those are not even, for me, those are not even like, uh, how do you want to say it? That, um, I guess for some people, maybe, but I, I just don't see them being happy people, you know? And I think I just want my kids to be happy and do something that they love rather than just, you know, everybody needs to make money because you need to survive. You need to pay the bills and you need to eat and you'd have a roof over your head. But it's just being happy at, at what you're doing and what, you know, what they're doing now, even if you're, you know, you're flipping burgers and that's, that makes you happy. Well, good for you, you know? Um, what was that? What was the second part? Oh, the scariest. scariest. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the scariest moment for me was with you when you were a teenager and not knowing what the heck was going on with you and what was going to happen. I mean, there was so many, so much tension and, and just uh, you know, uh, difficult situations, you know, when you would go off and not, and I would know where you were, you know, then I had to go calling people and threatening them and saying, you know, if you don't tell me where she is, I'm going to send the police and they're like, you're the first house they're, they're going to go to to ask. And, and then like, two minutes later, she's calling me on the phone, you know, so. <laughs> You know, those are the kind of things that's that, bad. You know, those little battles, you know, that just that bad. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think back and reflect on that, and I think, you know, I see her now, and she's a excellent adult, an excellent mother, an excellent person. I mean, I I, I hear things from her uh, coworkers and from her bosses, you know, of like how how determined and how you know uh, she. Her work is, is like beyond you know mm -hmm. what they would, they would ever have been able to, to get someone to do this. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. thank yes. You. <laughs> okay, mom, you're next. Well, and I think I, I think our answers would probably be pretty similar, um, in the sense that the most rewarding of being a, part of being a mom is to see how your children have turned out as adults, you know, um, to see that they're like Yolanda said, to be productive citizens, to, to have, you know, a job taking care of themselves. You know, I was never one to say that, you know, they had to do, you know, had to go to college. It was nice that they did because, you know, having an education, of course, you know, it, it gives you more options as far as, you know, to being able to take care of yourself. And, and but for them to be able to be happy and and to have and, and to have, you know, a good life, you know, a good life uh, to have great. I have great grandkids, you know, I mean nobody's perfect and when i say great in the sense that, that they're all still here <laughs> nobody's in jail <laughs> nobody's on drugs that i know about <laughs> you yeah. know that kind of thing so those are blessings that, that i look at and i'm so grateful and thankful for those things and the scariest things is has been when they've had been in bad relationships and you know, having to deal with that and, and seeing their hearts broken and, you know, just those kind of things. To me, that's scary because, you know, you just never know sometimes how things, those things could turn out, you know, because people are a little crazy sometimes. And, you know, so, and having, like I said, four girls, especially, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm worried about them sometimes and I was concerned, but, you know, overall, I can say that I think that they've come through with some great learned lessons, and and so I think that they're 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 okay now, and and I'm grateful for that, you know. Because as you get older, I know that I'm not going to be here, you know, always. So as a parent, you want your children to be okay, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Good questions. Love- good answers. Yeah, I love okay. that. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, being a mom, I, I completely agree. I think that, you know, I want for Taviana, like I said, I always pushed on her that education was first only because, and I'm sure it was a projection because I didn't study hard because of, you know, I was, I was never a person to want somebody to tell me what to do. I was never somebody, to, I don't want people to force me to do things that I don't want to do. Being somebody telling me I you have to go to school just wasn't for me. Like, don't tell me I have to get up to go to school in the morning. Like I will go when I want to go. And which is what I did, which is why I didn't graduate on time. I, I, my, but my mom told me, you know, we, I, we moved out here to Texas and she said, you're going to graduate with a high school diploma. I'm not going to let you get a GED. I want you to get a high school diploma. So I graduated from high school at 20 years old after I had Taviana. So with Taviana, I told her school first, I want you to graduate. Relationships come second. Now she's about to graduate from college with a master's. You know, and so I'm so proud of her. I'm so, so proud of her. But being a mom, I want her to do what she wants to do. She didn't have to go to school to be to go do her master's. She didn't have to do that. That wasn't an expectation for me. She did that on her own. But I gave her the freedom to do that if she wanted. My only request from her was to graduate high school. That's all I wanted from her. She chose to continue her studies because I told her if she wanted to do that, she needed to do it back to back while it was still fresh in her head. I didn't want her to take breaks. I didn't want her to wait two to three years and then decide she's going to go back because it may have not have happened. So I feel like, yeah, I just feel like to me being a mom is just, like I said, letting half your heart be with the other person that you're responsible for. And I made my mom a grandma when she was 40. My mom was very, very young when she became a grandma. And I think for both of you, both of you have grandkids. I think... I don't know. To me, being a grandma is just an upgraded mom (laughs) because you see your. Yes, because I'm a grandma too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all three of y'all got cram babies. Um, Because it's like you see another human being that's like an extension of you from your child. And I think that is so precious. So much better. I think I like the grandkids better. Than the kids. Yeah. And I think that's so precious. <laughs> I do. I'm like, that's an extension of you. Like you created a human and that human created another human. And it's like another yes. part of you. <laughs> right. I think you get you yeah. get to love on them without the responsibility of them. Yeah. And so I think like that's like that's why I just like just love being a grandma. It's like I just get to spoil her and then I leave. I'm like, see yeah. y'all later. And be <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. Like, it's great. It's great. That's that's so funny that Yolanda and I both became a grandparent at 40 because oh, I you became did too? a grandma. Yes, I became my first grand, you know, the first oldest grandchild. I became a grandparent at 40. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> I turned 40 in September and she was born in November. <laughs> so yeah, it, uh, yeah, it, it was funny. Yeah. But yeah, I became a grandparent at 40. Well, I just, uh, man, did you have another question? Was that, was that, was that your that was question? It. No. That was it. Mm-hmm. So I just would, I mean, for, I mean, Mother's Day is in a few days. Yes. Um, and mama already knows her Mother's Day present. Mama, so we had a rule growing up, but we, I guess when we became adults, like we weren't allowed to get mom anything for um, for the house as a present <laughs> because her mom thinks was that was not a present for me if everybody's mm-hmm. going to use it. Like that's not for me. And so, like that's you don't right. get any pots in a vacuum. Like what? Right. Like what, is, what, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Mama, that's not mama, a already present. Knows. Yeah, mom already knows her present. Mom, like she literally, I was like, Mom, what do you want? <laughs> what do you need? So, so like, I make it. I try to make it as easy as possible. Um, yeah. So, Mina, have you already gotten your mom her Mother's Day present? I did. I ordered it. It'll be here on Friday. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay. So y'all were getting those presents. Awesome. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Happy Mother's uh, Day. But I want right. to thank y'all so much for taking time out of your day to chat with me and Mandy. Yeah. And we love yeah. y'all to pieces. We are yes. the women that we are today because of y'all, Absolutely. directly because of y'all. And we would not have been able to be the parents that we are, much less the women that we are without y'all. So we wanted to bring y'all on here and just tell you in front of the world, thank y'all so much. We love yes. you to pieces. And I just thank you. I just want to tell my mom, yeah. thank you for searching. My mom knows I have put her through hell and back. And so <laughs> she has stuck with me, boy. Oh, yeah. Mama has yeah. stuck with me. <laughs> for so, sure. So well, oh, yes. What, what was, was that? Mm-hmm. All of your children are boys, right? 
I do have three boys. Ah, so you have, I have one girl. granddaughter. Oh, okay. She got yeah. her girl through her grandbaby. Grandbaby. <laughs> she looks just like you. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I gave birth to her. But then, thank y'all so thank much. It's been a great, great little episode. Obviously, we'll chit chat. Y'all will be back on for sure. Yeah. And we do another. Um, uh, we do have some neat things coming up. And so, um, for obviously for our viewers and our listeners, we're gonna have like an in person. I talk back with Ray and Mandy coming out soon. That we're planning so that's going to be a blast so we're going to like have tickets we're going to be on the radio we're going to invite people to come and hang out chill out with us and have swag and and music and dj so we're going to have a good time but we will have a i talk about the ray and mandy in person so it'd be awesome awesome yeah. all right just, thank y'all so have much a good evening okay you too. thank you bye bye, -bye. bye. Thank you for tuning in to I Talk Back with Ray and Mandy. Please hit the like and subscribe button to stay updated on future podcasts.